Hi folks, Chuck Black here. We are doing Quokka Walkthrough, where we look at the code that implements Quokka. Today's topic is RESTful APIs. We are going to look at how easy it is to define your RESTful APIs within Flask using decorators such as this and returning data. We will look at the fact that there are multiple types of RESTful APIs. We're looking specifically today at user interface APIs. We're going to look at Postman and see how in Postman you can make calls and look at the results so that you don't actually need to be doing it from the user interface. But we will also look at the user interface and see how you can set breakpoints and look at the calls which actually request the data, which are these fetch calls. So we'll briefly be looking at that. So hopefully this will give you a good understanding of uh, at least get you started or on the on-ramp of understanding how RESTful APIs are implemented in a real-world situation such as Quokka. So without further ado, let's get started. So today's topic is going to be views. And if I was to ask you what are views, then you might answer, well, that's easy. That's what presents this uh, web-based interface with the nice graphs and the nice list of devices and things of that nature. And my answer to that would be that, well, you're partially true. It is true that the data portion of these screens, whether it's a table like this or whether it is a graph that looks something like this, uh, the data portion of this is provided by the views inside Quokka. And you will recall from our picture here on the left that the actual framework of the page itself, the HTML, etc., is coming from the user interface uh, code that we have that we also went through a couple weeks ago, and that the actual data is coming through REST APIs, also known as views, that are provided from Quokka. Now, that is true, and that's what we're going to look at. But I just want you to be aware that views in Quokka goes beyond just the user interface stuff. In fact, if I was to go down, I'm looking at my documentation for Quokka, by the way, that I created that you are welcome to look at. It's just on my GitHub repository for Quokka slash wiki. Um, if we were to look at these pictures, then you can see, oh, well, the UI views are one portion of them. There's also... Uh, views that are somehow communicating with devices. This is when remote devices give us their heartbeat. There's also views that are related to gathering um, and displaying capture information for packet capture, extended port scan, as well as trace route. So there's a number of views. And the more I think about this, the more happy I am that last week we spent a little bit of time and I reorganized this. There used to just be uh, one uh, views for all the UI stuff. And then there was a bunch of the other uh, views were put in here as well. What I ended up doing was I separated the UI stuff into device views, host views, service views, and then miscellaneous views. And then under device views, I have... Uh, the views that will be used by devices when they communicate with us, not to be confused with the UI device views, which is actually different. And then there's the workers and the workers. Actually, uh, this is for workers to communicate with us as well as for uh, us to communicate with the worker processes that are running either locally or remotely and are performing the work of port scan, packet capture, trace route for us. So I put the views into different areas. Now we're going to keep it simple for describing what's going on by looking at UI views. In particular, we're going to look at host views. So uh, we're going to keep things as simple as possible so that you who don't have a background in this can begin to get off uh, the ground and running with your understanding of how to implement RESTful APIs in Flask. So let's look a little bit closer here at my host views. That's what we're looking at right here. Now the first question that you may ask is, hang on a minute, how do we even know how host views got invoked or called or whatever 
by Python in our Flask application. And if you recall, we had this function, uh, this module called init that gets executed at the beginning of my Flask application. And we created the actual Flask application. And at one point in time, I have things organized such that I go through and I do all of these import statements for my views. This is where I am letting Flask know about all of the different APIs, all the different REST APIs or views that are going to exist in my product. So uh, you can do this at various times, but uh, Flask just needs to know about it at some point in time before you try to use it. Now you can see here's my host views. This used to be different, but remember I reorganized things. So in the latest version of code, um, I am here at host views. By the way, if you are keeping up with me on your uh, in the GitHub repository, I'll point out to you that I'm actually still out on this branch, just so you know. So if you were to go looking for this code, you would need to look on this branch if you're uh, a more advanced developer there. But getting back to this, this is where we told our application that this host views things exists. Now let's go back to host views and see what we are telling uh, Python and specifically Flask about our application in the way that we define our REST APIs. Now, I've mentioned this before, I believe, but just to reiterate, see this at sign here, that's an indication that the thing that is coming next is what we call, and this is not a Python thing, but it's universally in software development, it's called a decorator. And what a decorator does is it helps to define and provide extra information about the function that's going to follow. So it is actually going to help the compiler um, because Python is actually compiled even though it behaves like an interpreted language. This is, and this is true in other languages as well. It lets the language know, okay, there's something special going on here and you need to set up whatever linkages. And the linkages that is going to get set up by Flask is we're saying, I need you to set a route. Route is the word that we use to define the actual URL that is going to be used to invoke and call this function that we are defining right here. So when you create a user interface web-based stuff, you usually specify the actual route, and that is what this is doing. And that is saying, whenever somebody comes in to my Flask web service and provides this URL uh, with this piece of it, this UI slash hosts, and is doing a get, then I want you to execute the following code. And this is the code that it will execute. So let's take a moment here. This obviously is the portion of the URL that's going to be uh, routed to us. Here we can specify the methods that are allowed. So we're allowing only a get method. You could potentially have post, put, delete, patch, other types of methods if you wanted to do them. For this particular URL, we are only allowing a get request to be done. So if I was to jump ahead really quickly, I would say, well, why do you then check for this? And I would say, you know what? I don't really need to. And not only that, when I was looking at this just a second ago, uh, in between recording sessions, I realized, oh, look, I have a bug here. Um, and so I'll get to that in just a minute. So let's just focus on what it's going to do for now. And I'm going to clean up this code uh, in just a moment. What it's going to do, all it's going to do is it's going to return data. So as you can imagine, what would you suppose if you saw this in a, in a URL, what do you suppose it's asking for if it's doing a git? Probably it's asking for, hey, give me information about all of the hosts. And so I would assume that it's going to go access the database, the back end, get me information about all the hosts and return that information to me. And there's a couple of things I want you to notice here. So. Let's pause for a second uh, for the newer people. I'm doing a return, and this is where I specify the data that I'm going to return. 
Now, I happen to have these curly braces, and you might ask, well, what is that? Is that some special syntax for a return statement in Flask for returning uh, data? And the answer is no, that's not true. This is just a Python dictionary, just like any other dictionary. I could have declared a variable and done get all hosts and assigned it to a variable and then said return that variable name. But I'm bundling things together here. So I'm putting everything onto this one line and I'm creating a dictionary. What is my key? The key is this string that is hosts. That's because that's kind of the contract that I have with the user interface that when it actually asks for that information over here, uh, this is where I request host information. Uh, it just went through that code that we were just looking at and got all this information back. And the request that it made was this exact request that we're looking at right here, UI slash hosts. And what am I, what is the value? That's the key. What's the value? Well, the value is, all right, so for those of you that are new, if you look at this, let's think about it for a second. What am I doing? I'm calling this function called get all hosts. And if I was to follow this through, I'm just going to follow it down, do a control B. Here I am, get all hosts. I'm in APIs. If I want to know where APIs is, I can look up here. This is kind of the uh, breadcrumbs that show me where I am in the directory. I'm at Quokka. That's that Quokka. Uh, Quokka sub uh, package, the Quokka package. I'm in models. Oh, okay. That's in models. And then, whoops. And I just went away from where I was. So let me go back to where I am. So models, okay, there we are. And inside models, I'm on API. So that's where I am right there. And that tells me, okay, models, you will recall, this is where I'm dealing with all of the database. This is where I define my database classes. And so I have this layer in front of the actual SQL alchemy code that insulates my code from the SQL alchemy. So if I wanted to change out SQL alchemy at some point in time, then I could more easily do that because I have this APIs layer. And APIs, again, this is something else that's gotten to be quite big. You can see that has many lines in it as well. But I'm digressing and getting myself off track. Get all hosts, what is this gonna do? It's gonna make a database query into SQL Alchemy, and it is going to get back a list of hosts from that table, and then it's gonna go through, and this is basically kind of, I'm making up a word here, it's gonna Pythonize all of my data. It's gonna remove all of the SQL Alchemy details and just return me a list of dictionaries. Here you can see I'm gonna take this host object that I got back, and I'm going to uh, remove all of the SQL Alchemy stuff so that it is just a simple dictionary with host information in it. And what is hosts? It's a list, so I'm appending it to that list and I'm returning it. So this is utilizing all the regular, um, <clears throat> all the regular Python stuff that we've learned. If you're doing 52 weeks of Python, I'm just creating a list and I'm appending to this list and then I'm returning that list. And from here, that is what is going to get put in here. This is going to return a list of all of the hosts. And that, my friends, is what is used to populate this nice table that we see right here. So here we are back at the hosts function, which is my REST API view. And this is where we're returning the host information. Now I mentioned that I have extraneous information. It's always better to have less code than more. This is number one, this is redundant, so I don't need to do that, so I'm gonna get rid of it. The second thing is I have a bug here. I'm returning this text value, but I'm not giving it the actual uh, number of the status code that I would wanna return here anyway. So not only is the, the code unnecessary, but it also has a bug in it. So let's just clean this up. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to now delete these two and put this back to where it was. And I'm going to put that return statement where it ought to be. So 
uh, much better. All I need is this. In fact, I could even make it a little bit more concise. And then uh, we have this nice, clean REST API. Now, one thing that I wanted to point out is this, and I just realized this a moment ago. Decorators affect the function that is defined immediately below that. So you have your decorator directly above the definition of the function. In fact, if I was to do something as benign as just put an empty space in there, maybe I like empty spaces, guess what? PyCharm is going to complain about it. It's not going to give me an error, but it's gonna say, hey, there's blank lines found after, there's the word function decorator. So you're, you don't have to believe me that it's a decorator. It actually says it here in PyCharm. So it's even squawking at me about that. And so I can remove that <clears throat> and now PyCharm is much happier. So uh, here we have this. I haven't actually run it yet. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you so that you can have a general idea of how this might work, how you might debug it. I'm actually going to set a breakpoint here. I'm going to go to my uh, my PyCharm, uh, sorry, my, um, my Quokka that is running. I'm going to shut it down. I need to wait a minute for it to shut down cleanly. Okay, we have shut down now officially. So now I am going to attempt to run Quokka from the debugger. Now I'm not going to show you how I run it from the debugger. I actually can't remember if I've shown you how this actually works, but you'll need to take my word for it. I'm gonna run Flask in the debugger. I don't know if I have other breakpoints, I might, but I'm gonna let this run and get started and then we are going to make a call in here and we're going to actually observe what happens. Okay, I went to the devices screen just so that I wouldn't be on the host screen and we wouldn't hit the breakpoint directly. And I don't know if I have any other breakpoints uh, You'll have to forgive me if I have to uh, quickly go through or edit in case I do have other breakpoints. But right now, as you can see, and this is a little bit cool, I am actually running Quokka in the PyCharm debugger. See this? It's actually running um, and it's giving me my output down here, which is kind of cool. Now I set this breakpoint right in this host call. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to the host screen and what should happen is it should pop into this breakpoint right here. So let's see if that happens. I'm gonna go, let me do this so that we can see this a little bit better. Scrunch it up. I'm gonna go say, show me the host screen. Ha, and sure enough, here I am at my host's request right here. You can see all the stack stuff. This is way more involved than it was in Python 52 weeks if you guys are going through that. But right here I can see I've, I've broken and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and say let's step into this function get all hosts. Ah, and here I am in get all hosts. You can see if for those of you familiar with how uh, software actually works. We have a new function on top of the stack, which is called get all hosts. And I don't have any variables here yet. I'm going to step through this and we're going to observe. Now I have uh, my host objects. Remember, this is what I got from my database. So this is a host class data and these are all of the different uh, pieces that are actually part of my host. And so here's my host information. I have information about the name of the host, the MAC address, when I last heard it, the IP address, etc. That's pretty cool, but it also has other uh, information. Whoops. And I've hit it again, probably because I just 
uh, yeah, I'm kind of messing things up here from a user input standpoint. So let's uh, let's uh, walk through this and uh, let's see. I'm going to do a refresh hosts here. Let me do this now. Here I am. I'm going to go down into get all hosts. So I'm saying go into get all hosts and I'm going to step through this one at a time. And you can see what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm going to end up uh, and this is the danger when a whole bunch of things are going on. I'm building up this list of hosts. You can see I have a list, dictionary, etc. And at the very end, I'm just going to resume this. At the very end, I'm going to return this hosts thing. And when I do return, I'm going to end up back here. And now I'm going to return to the user interface, which is what you see right here. So now we see all of this data. So that was a little bit, uh, it's a little bit more complicated when you do debug things, when you have tons of stuff going on, uh, like we did, we ended up in our Flask application and that wasn't where we needed to be. Uh, if I edit that out, <laughs> then I was talking about a place that we went that we really didn't need to go to. So here you see how, you know, having a breakpoint and getting to, getting to see how this actually works is kind of a useful thing. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to terminate this so that I don't get entered again all the time. What I want to do is I want to demonstrate to you something else. Now, our console, we are still running, hopefully okay. Our Quokka server is running in the background. But I wanted to introduce you. Whoops, I forgot I have that. So. I don't need that. Let's just run this. So uh, yeah, at this point in time, um, I'm a little bit confused why that got called. I wonder if I have another Quokka running somewhere. I don't think that I do. So this is what I want to introduce you to. It's called Postman. And basically what this is, is it's an application that was created for uh, making REST API calls. And so here is my Postman. And what you do is something like this, and I'm gonna do it with, we don't even have hosts here. I'm gonna modify this one I'm going to take this away and I'm going to say hosts. So I'm creating the URL that I'm going to be using to get at that REST API. The, the uh, method that I'm using is get, so that's okay. And let's just do a send here and let's see what happens. Ah, so we hit this breakpoint right here, so that's good. I'm just going to return and let's go back to our postman and see what ended up happening. Here it is showing us the actual results and this is where it's very useful to do debugging. Do you see all of this handy data? Now this data, what's this format? It's going to be in, you can probably tell by looking at this thing right here, it's in JSON format. That's how things get returned by default when my application just returns a dictionary. So I mentioned this in the 52 weeks of Python when I was talking about JSON. As of Python, uh, as of Flask 1.0 or 1.1 perhaps, we no longer had to specify the need to call a function called JSONify in order to change from Python data structures into JSON. It does it automatically for us, Flask does. And so Flask is taking this uh, dictionary that says hosts and get the output of get all hosts that remember was a list and it is going to get translated into JSON. And you notice how nicely it did this. This is my JSON. So it's an object. The first uh, item in the object is actually going to be um, my key, which is hosts. And then the type of data, here's my square bracket, 
it's going to be a list. And if I was to scroll all the way down, you would see that these are all of the hosts that are actually showing up in the user interface. So here I can look at actually the data that was getting returned to me. Okay, availability, IP address, last heard MAC address, name, response time. These are all interesting things that I think you'll remember from the user interface are actually printed out in the user interface. So just for kicks, and because I said that, uh, because I modified this code here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to try to do a post. And I'm gonna do a send here, and I suspect that what I will get back is something that says 405 method not allowed. Well, that's fairly descriptive and that's ex exceptionally helpful. I'm not even being sarcastic. The post method is indeed not allowed. My code never even got called. So that's the good news. That confirms for me that I do not need all that extra stuff that I put in there. So I could go and fix that. Probably while I'm out on this branch, I will fix that in device uh, views and service views, etc. But that is how Postman works. Now you can see over here, this is for debugging. I've, I've saved all of these things, uh, different information that I can get. If I wanted to get the host status, now what I have to be passing in is a host ID. I don't know that my host ID is correct, but I'm going to say, go ahead and get me this. I don't even know if this is going to work. Ah. It does work, all right? So this is actually getting host status. Let's look at the code really quickly. Uh, here is host status, and what's it going to return? It returns a dictionary, but instead of having only one item, it has three items, host data, host summary, and host. And the host data is going to be the status data. The summary is the summary data. Remember that uh, screen that has the, all the nice graphs? and then my host information for printing it out in the user interface. And so if I was to go to Postman and look, I would expect to see host. Yep, there's my host. This is my one host. Remember, I asked for host ID of one and indeed it returned me host ID number one. I asked for the data associated with it. And so this data has different timestamps. Here's a 932, there's 930, there's 929, there's 927, there's 925, etc. So it's returning, I think I asked for 24 data points. So it should be returning 24 of these. And then host summary, that's gonna give me, I think 24 summarized. So this gives me per hour. Do you see this? This is at the hour of eight o'clock on the 26th, that's today, and here's seven o'clock on today. And if I keep going, uh, then, oh yeah, so here's, uh, actually, let's see, yeah. So you can see it wasn't actually running, uh, so I didn't actually have any data. Here's yesterday at six o'clock. Um, that would be six o'clock in the morning as well. So I haven't been running it much because I've been recording. So you can see that uh, this goes back in time. Anyway, hopefully you see the one-to-one -one relationship between what we just looked at there and this data that I'm actually returning. And once again, I'll just re-emphasize, all I need to do is return a Python data structure like this dictionary and Python and Flask is going to convert it for us. I actually think that it, and this is just in the back of my mind, I might be incorrect, it may be necessary to return a dictionary. Like here, you may say, well, I asked for hosts. Why are you returning it like this? It, I believe that perhaps this is an issue I ran into with Flask where I can't return an array. I needed to return a dictionary. So that's what I did. So that is this code. And now we've also looked at how you can use Postman to make requests. So we looked at making the request using Postman. We also looked at going through the call in the debugger. The thing I wanna show you now is what it looks like from the actual user interface side of things. So in order to do this, I'm going to make 
my browser window large. Now this is a Chrome specific, although there are analogous pieces of functionality with in Firefox or whatever browser you use. I'm just not that familiar with it. Remember, uh, you're listening to a guy who's not an expert in front end code, JavaScript, etc. This is my first foray into it, but I do know how to do some level of debugging and that's what I want to show you here. Not so much for debugging, but just so you can see what's going on and if you are interested in the front end side of things. So what I'm going to do here in Chrome is I'm going to go to the three dots. I'm going to come down to more tools and then I'm going to go down to developer tools. That is appropriately named if you're a software developer, then this will pop up some tools that will help you to debug your code or uh, debug the code on the server side of things. And so uh, this is what I'm going to do. Now, here I am in my host JavaScript file. If you recall from back in our last session, or was it two sessions? Two sessions ago where I talked about the user interface and I gave you a brief stroll through the code. And I did mention like for hosts or services or whatever, I have this function, which is going to allow us to call uh, fetch to get the data from the host. And you see, I've actually hit the breakpoint here. I'm going to go ahead and resume it. And then what ends up happening later on is I'm getting the data back. So while I gab on a little bit, I'm going to uh, just go ahead and resume that. You can see that it is printed with the most recent data. And so that's all good. I've, it seems to be working okay. But here, what I can do with developer tools is this is my host JavaScript file, which prints out all of this. This fetch host is where it actually makes the REST API call. And if we were to look at this, you can see, ah, does that look familiar? UI slash host. So I'm doing this request. I'm making a uh, get request for this particular URL. And that is what we are going to be sending using this a built-in function in JavaScript called fetch. And things work asynchronously. So when we see this get down to one, we're going to see it hit this fetch. And that's going to happen. And I'm going to resume it. So here we've hit the breakpoint. I'm going to resume it. We've done the fetch call. It goes away. And then, boom, I got the data back. So my data came back. And if I was to close call stack and look at my local data, um, what I'm going to see is that this actual data is the data that I have received from in JSON format for all of these hosts. Let's see if I can make this big enough. So that look like a bunch of hosts out there. Those are all of my hosts on my network. So you can see that I've got the data back. I'm going to let this resume so that I don't get backed up. And um, you can see it's going to be updating it there. So if you want to link with the browser call that is made that actually invokes what is going on in my uh, in my host views, then that is it. That's what we were just looking at. And I'll leave these breakpoints here. If I get rid of this, then it won't hit the breakpoints anymore. It will just do its normal thing when it gets down to the appropriate point. And if I were to do this, then uh, actually we saw this before, but when this gets down to uh, making the request, then you'll see this is what it actually is going to get. Boom, I hit my breakpoint. I'm just going to resume it. What I'm going to do now, actually, is I'm going to change things around host status, remember? So that is what happens if I go down here to get my status. So what we should expect to happen is we should accept to hit a breakpoint here. Let's see if that happens. Sure enough, here I hit my host, uh, my host status breakpoint. I'm going to go ahead and resume that. And we'll go back here, and sure enough, this is the data that it populated in the screen. So that is REST APIs. It's giving you a glimpse 
Um, this isn't a REST API tutorial. This is rather a usage of REST APIs within Quokka. Hopefully though, it has given you a significantly decent background on how REST APIs work, how we define them in Flask, how they're getting called in Quokka, and how you can observe them in the debugger uh, in this developer tools stuff that we looked at. Remember, developer tools, we looked at that. There's it's getting kind of crowded, so it's going to look a little bit funny. And then we also looked at Postman and how can you actually look at this data if you were just doing like debugging type stuff. Hopefully that gives you a good, uh, reasonably rounded understanding of what these REST APIs are, how they work, how we invoke them in Quokka. Hey guys, this is Chuck. I want to interject something here. The next section I'm going to say that I'm going to describe how to create requests in Postman and how to save them. And while I am going to be doing that, in addition, I'm going to be talking about how you retrieve request arguments that come in from the request. So when we look at this request, we can see, oh, look at this. There's a couple of arguments. There's the service ID and the data points. And so how do you get those? And the answer is you get those very easily by utilizing the request object that is defined within Flask and then specifying .args, .git, and then you specify the actual name of the argument that has been passed in. But I talk about that in the next section a little bit. I've done it a little bit here too as well. But uh, so this next section I advertise as being only about Postman, but I do realize that I haven't talked about this and I go into it in a little bit of detail. So stick with it. Before we go, I thought it might be useful to show you how to get started with your own usage of Postman. And so what I've done is I've gotten rid of everything that was loaded and I want to show you how to create a simple uh, request from Postman. So what I've done, and, and you can ignore all of my different collections that I've saved, I'm going to come over here, open a tab, and now uh, I have an untitled request. It by default is a git, so that's good. I'm going to type in my uh, local host colon 5000, which is what my uh, Quokka server is running on. And I'm going to do UI devices. So I'm going to do UI devices and hit return. It does the send and you can see that it actually went and got all of my devices. There should be, I think, three of them. And what I could then do is I could then say save and I could give it the request name. I could tell it that I want it to go into Quokka and I'm gonna save that in my Quokka. If I would then wanted to get services, uh, I could do UI services. Let's see if this is correct. Uh, it is correct. So now I've got services and now I can say save as I don't want to save it on top of devices. I always do that wrong. I always end up saving something new on top of the old one and end up having to redo it. So don't be a doofus like me, uh, do what I just did. So now I've got these services and devices. Don't worry if you do something wrong, like I just did this when I was fooling around. I did 500 and Got a connection refused, didn't know why, and it's because I typed it in incorrectly. Uh, if I type in something like this, if I just, uh, let's see what happens if I do this, and it tells me not found, the crested URL was not found on the server. Uh, if I type in some wrong data, like let me see if I can find something with some wrong data. So, here is something I used to call my service status. I used to call it TS. Do you see this here, TS? I used to do that for um, time series. And so when I do this, it's going to tell me that it doesn't exist, 404 not found. And then when I realized, oh, well, um, that should be S-T-A-T-U-S, send it, let's see if that works. 
And sure enough, uh, my service is actually uh, Google, going to Google. What type of service is it? It's HTTP, uh, yeah, HTTPS. So that's what that is. If I was to go and ask for a bad service, I don't even know what would happen here. Let me see if my code is resilient enough or if it barfs. Uh, well, it just returned nothing, so there's nothing there. Uh, probably should say that the service was not found. That's something that uh, in a real product we would want to fix, obviously. I wonder what happens if I just omit the service ID entirely. Let me get rid of that and let me see what happens here. Must provide service ID and data points. 400 bad requests. Okay, so that's good. I forgot the service ID. I could have had some code that would be a little bit more special. If you want to see this, Let's go here. The, one of the easiest ways to do this, I'm, and I'm just showing you here, I'm gonna do a control C to copy it. I actually know where this is, but I am going to do a control shift F in order to find stuff. And I'm looking in Quokka and I'm gonna put in that error result. And look, there it is in service views 29. I can double click on that. It takes me right here. Look at where I am. I'm in Quokka, Quokka Views UI Service Views. We probably could have figured that out. I think you would. And here I am coming in and I can see that, that, that if I'm missing the surface ID or the number of data points, I specify that you must provide both of them. Now, maybe it would be smarter to um, <clears throat> provide a little bit more detail on which one was missing, but uh, there you get the idea. Now, one last thing while I'm here, and this is actually really important, and this is more for the tutorial on how we do uh, REST APIs, which I will do more of in the 32 weeks of Python. But notice this, this is how you get those parameters. You use the request variable. So this is part of what we get with Flask. There's this thing called request. So when I get called, Flask has populated this thing called request. And I can say, get me request.args. And the, this is the one that I want you to give me, service ID. And this is also the one I want you to give me. And if I was to go back to Postman and we were to look at that, this, let's see if I can do Control Z to bring it back to where it was. Yeah, let me do one more where it was. Correct. Here we see these are the two uh, request arguments that gets passed in, the service ID and the data points. So both of those need to be provided. And this is how we get those out of, um, out of <clears throat> the request that is coming in. I probably should have made this a uh, bigger point. Uh, I'll probably add something into this to highlight the fact that I'm gonna talk about this a little bit later on, which is right here. So if you're here, <laughs> then you have figured this out. This is basically what we do in order to get the parameters that get passed in. So this is the URL, this is the portion of the URL, and these are the parameters. Now the last thing that we would wanna get would be the body, but I don't actually do that right now in, um, Quokka because I don't have anything that actually sends me JSON type data. I only, the requests that I get in Quokka right now are only passing me uh, these identifiers and number of data points, that type stuff. And then I return the JSON data via something like this. I don't have uh, the post type functionality for doing a bunch of stuff. So that hopefully gives you a little bit of an idea. Um, I'm trying to remember where we started out. Oh yeah, we were doing Postman, how you created Postman. This is what you do, uh, pretty easy to do. And did I save this? Uh, I would, I, I changed it to make it right. I'd probably modify this to say service status so that that's correct and save it. And now my service TS data or whatever it said now says service status. And if I make this request correctly, then there it is. There's my data. Okay. 
easy as pie. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of what it is that we do in Quokka and how to make use of Postman to exercise those APIs that you've created. So before we wrap this up, I do want to clarify one thing that I said. I mentioned that in uh, our REST APIs, we don't take JSON data. And while that is true, where I intended it, in the UI, we don't really have configuration data coming in that we use. We do mostly a GITs of various data. With respect to the workers, they do send their data back using posts and thus sending a bunch of JSON data. I will talk about that in the next lesson. So just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Okay, to review what we talked about, we're talking about views, also known as REST APIs. We talked about decorators and how they help to define what it is that uh, gets mapped or routed to our functions. The functions can then return data in the JSON format. This is actually a Python dictionary uh, with a list as the value, but it gets translated into JSON. We looked a little bit at how you parameters get passed in. We discussed the fact that there is the functionality to do posts uh, and to pass in JSON data, but we don't do that in the user interface. We do, however, do it in our workers, and we'll look at that next time. We talked about how to uh, look at the information that gets called and passed back using the debugger. We looked at how you can see it in the actual browser by looking at uh, the code here, our JavaScript code, and we talked about how you can use Postman to test out your stuff by easily creating these REST requests and seeing the responses here. Hopefully this has been useful to get you started down the path of doing REST APIs and you have a better understanding both how to do it and how Quokka uses it in its functionality.